Sonia, can you see? Looks great, Jaime. Okay. You got it. Yep. Uh, good afternoon, um, Jaime Piñero, UMass Entomology. My goal today is to provide you with a brief overview, how much can I say in 10 minutes, right? Of um, chemical and non-chemical controls for three very important Lepidopteran pests. So I only have six slides. I will um, spend time on, on those. So the first one is a table that compares the biological attributes of each species. So all these three species overwinter as larvae, but in the case of oriental fruit moth and codling moth, those larvae that spend the winter are ready to pupate in the spring. So that's why when they're ready to pupate, they are going to show up in the orchard before oblique bander leaf roller. And in this case, what you have in, in the spring is a very small larva that is going to continue feeding and it's going to show up a few weeks later compared to oriental fruit moth and codling moth. So based on that, you can expect the, the peak flights not to be at the same time. So for oriental fruit moth, you can expect the flights to be during bloom, the peak, codling moth around petal fall, and for the oblique van der leaf roller, it will happen around uh, mid-June it depends on the weather conditions. When to set up monitoring traps? Well, it depends on when they start activity. So I would say that a pink stage is a good time for oriental fruit moth, you're in bloom for codling moth, and it will be done in mid-May or in the third week of May for oblique banderly roller. When it comes to control, well, if you're going to be using biofix, and to determine when is the expected date for a, a larval activity that you're going to control, I want to explain what biofix is. That will be the sustained flights. So when you have a trap in place and you check these traps every day or three times per week, then you may have one month. The next day you may have zeros or the, the next two or three days. So, but, but there is a point at which you will have maybe one, two, one, those sustained captures becomes the biofix. That will be the date. The date at which you are going to start recording in degree days. And this, the temperature, the base temperature is not the same for each species. So for orita fruit moth, the base temperature is 45. So degree days that accumulate beyond 45 every day starts at biofix. So, you're going to control the first uh, generation larvae for oriental fruit, fruit moth at around 350 to, to 375 uh, degree days, base 45 degrees. At this moment is when you have about 50 to 60% of the eggs hatching. So you're targeting the larvae because in, usually insecticides don't kill adults or it's difficult to kill them with insecticides. Um, for codling moth, you can target the larvae, the first generation when you accumulate 220 to 250 degree days after the biofix. And for oblique van der Leef rollers, because if they show up later, it will happen about 360 to 440 to 450. That's when you can expect also about 50% of the eggs hatching. So the asterisk, one asterisk means that in low pressure orchards for codling moth, if you have been using mating disruption or you don't have high pressure, then you can wait until you hit 350 because that will be more eggs that you can kill uh, or larvae with, with the sprays. And the two red and asterisk means that the petal fold spray insecticide should kill a lot of these oblique band leaf roller larvae which are in the orchard. If you have low pressure, you can wait until you get to about 600 degree days, base 43, based on results from scouting. It's also important to scout in, in the trees. Let me see this guy. I'm having a. I need to move the skin. Okay. So, again, um, to be able to calculate the biofix, when you set up the traps, you can check daily or three times a week. And once you get this sustained flight, then it's going to become the date for the biofix. Then you can start accumulating the degree days. So biofix data are highly reliable. What you have here is a chart 
um, where you have degree day accumulation on the y-axis and you have the date when the, diode, the biofix took place. Um, this is data that comes from Penn State and it covers 14 years. Basically, what I want, my, what I want to point out is that the biofix, which again is the sustained flights for this oriental fruit moth, is not based on date. You can see that the range is very close for degree days. So basically, between 200 and 250 degree days, that's when the biofix took place in most years. That's a pretty good uh, inform information because then you can determine when to set up the traps. So I just wanted to show you that it's reliable on degree days, not um, on date. So the next uh, uh, slide, uh, I want to start discussing, um, there is also what is called mating disruption. Most of you know what it is. Basically, you can inundate the orchard with the synthetic sex pheromone of the moth, and then the males are going to have a hard time finding the females. So the females don't mate, the males get confused, don't find the females, the females don't mate, and then you don't have an um, injury on the fruit because the eggs are not um, viable. So in 2020, we're going to do a, a study in three or four commercial orchards, and the target species is oblique banded leaf roller because the pheromone also includes the moth. There is two pheromones in the in dispensers. Then we can also control the moth at the same time. So what you see on top is the dispenser that we're going to be using. It's called the Sidetrack um, from Trese Company. But in 2019, we evaluated um, mating disruption in one orchard in Massachusetts with, with good results. In 2020, we're going to do more work um, by targeting oblique van der Leer roller. So at each orchard, we're going to compare two different treatments. One is the mating disruption formulation, which is a low rate of deployment in the field. It's about 32 dispensers per acre. And it's supposed to last the whole season. So if you deploy the, the mating disruption system in, let's say, early May, it's going to be good um, or effective until September or even October. So um, the second treatment is this, the grower control. It's a block where the gr grower is going to control the um, pest um, using insecticides. So again, one orchard is the UMass Cold Spring Orchard. What you see on the left picture is 8.4 acres for mating disruption. And in the second picture on the right is 8.1 acres for the grower control. I guess somebody has a question or somebody is uh, raising their hands. But I will continue. So a second orchard, and um, today I got noticed that I can work in Red Apple Farm, grower control versus mating disruption. And we also have uh, one more orchard, which is six acres, mating disruption, and 2.2 .2 acres for grower control in uh, Rags Hill Orchard. So we are inviting um, anyone, I need one more orchard. If you would like to be, um, if you would like to participate in this study, again, the target pest is oblique van der Leer roller. Just let me know. So the methodology is explained in this um, slide. So we're going to get materials uh, for the mating disruption study. It's going to be free, at, I mean, at no cost for you. We're going to deploy the monitoring traps for the different pests. We're going to compare also male captures um, using the pheromone, which is a standard versus a um, dispenser, which is supposed to be improved over the standard. So every week, we're going to go to the field and collect data, male and female captures. We're going to sex the adults. We're going to dissect the females to determine if they're mated or non-mated. And then we're going to replace the lures as needed, the monitoring lures. And at harvest, we're going to quantify injury in the mate disruption block versus the grower control. So if you are doing mating disruption, I just have some suggestions to conclude this presentation, is that when you use monitoring lures for codling moth, the best lure to use is called the CMDA lure because it's a combination of the, of the sex pheromone and one plant volatile, which is called pure ester. When you have these two components, it's going to be more effective at monitoring uh, for codling moth. 
when, if, you are if you have a mating disruption system for oriental fruit moth, you can use the standard lure. So how many traps to have in a block for monitoring? Because you should not find moths on traps, on monitoring traps. Because if a male is, can find the lure in a trap, well, the male can also find a female. So when you find moths on traps, monitoring traps, that tells you that the system is not working very well. So the density is about one trap for each species for every five acres. And then some traps in the periphery of the orchard will give you information about immigrating, immigrating um, moths. So to conclude, I think I would like just to mention that we're using uh, these traps, which are a little more expensive, but they're much easier to use. And then uh, one, this is my last slide. In 2019, we conducted a study and the goal was to see if we could kill females using plant volatiles. So we're um, testing some experimental lures. And I don't have time to talk about the study or the results, but it is coming up in the uh, spring um, issue of the fruit notes. So that concludes my presentation. And I think it was I, I hope it was 10 minutes. If you have any questions, I think at the end, Sonia or Liz, thank you. <laughs>